All right, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Grandmaster Sam Shanklin, and I'm here to cover the final game of the Carlson de Pomiacci World Championship match, uh, which was only game 11 out of 14, but uh, because Magnus won this game and reached a plus four score and had four wins and no losses, even if Nepomniachtchi were to win the last three games, he would lose the match. So the match is over. I'd like to show how the last game went, and we're going to do this using uh, the Decode Chess software, which, uh, of course, everyone should be familiar with by this point. So the game started off with E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, and Nepomniachtchi had always played Bishop B5 in his previous white games in this position, but here he tried Bishop C4. Uh, but at least for me, the first interesting moment came here. After a5, rook e1, a5 is a very typical way that black often plays in these Italian games. But after rook e1, black played this move, bishop a7. And I wasn't totally clear on why Magnus chose to play this move. One of my understanding of the position is one of the big reasons that black plays the move a5 is to prevent white from playing b4, which means this bishop doesn't necessarily have to retreat back to a7. Uh, but at the same time, the bishop on c5 can be vulnerable to a d4 push. So uh, bringing it back like that makes some sense. And now I quite liked the move knight a3 played by Nepomniachtchi with, uh, well, potentially the idea of going knight b5. But as we will see in the game, that's not actually what he did. So Magnus played h6, uh, which makes a lot of sense because uh, it prevents bishop g5. And this is sort of what you can see if... Um, h6, white well, cannot play bishop g5 because of h takes g5. And the move bishop g5 can be kind of annoying in these positions uh, because normally with the bishop on g5, you want to break the pin with bishop e7, and clearly the bishop on a7 is a very long way away from doing that. So h6 came. And then this was the first move from Nepomniachtchi that I really didn't like. Uh, I was not a fan of knight c2 here. I believe that he should have played the move knight b5. Uh, trying to take advantage of the weak square on b5 and getting a tempo on this bishop on uh, on a7. And then after something like bishop b6, uh, bishop e3, bishop takes e3, and rook takes e3, I think white has reasonable chances for an advantage here because he can hope to push d4. And then once in this structure, whoever gets d4 for white or d5 for black first tends to be doing really well. And here when white plays d4, black center will be under a little bit of pressure. Now, it's still very solid for black. I don't think it's anything wildly special. And I'm sure Magnus had prepared something reasonable. But this kind of position I can sort of abide by. Knight c2 I disliked uh, because this sort of has the plan of playing bishop e3 and taking on e3 with the knight. But I don't like that because after castle and then bishop e3, bishop takes e3 and knight takes e3. The problem with the knight on e3 is that it blocks this rook on the e-file who can no, no, long, no longer defend the e4 pawn. And uh, as a result, white has a very hard time playing d4, which is the main way that he will uh, he will try to improve his position. So I very much like the move rook e8. And here, uh, Dakota is pointing out that it controls e6. Uh, I very much like that after rook e8, we're ready to play bishop e6 next to neutralize the powerful c4 bishop without forcing black to take back with the pawn on e6. So as you see here in this line after a3, uh, in this line with the code here with a3, bishop e6, uh, it's pointing out, it says black can play rook takes e6. Now the implication behind that is that we prefer to take with the rook than with the pawn in this position. And I think that's true. And this is pretty similar to how the game actually went. So following rook e8, Nepomniachtchi chose a4, which is a reasonable move, bishop e6. And I think because white played this whole knight c2 to knight a3 c2 and then took on e3 with the knight, I believe white's not better. I think this is just a very balanced position, but it still seems very safe and like nothing should go horribly long, horribly wrong right away. So there came take on e6, rook e6. You know, queen b3 is a reasonable move. Uh, it says it's good because it threatens to play queen takes b7. Sure, it develops a piece with a gain of tempo, but uh, of course b6 makes perfect sense. Um, it escapes capture by the white queen. You know, decode is pointing this out, so that does a better job than what just your standard engine would do. Rook a d1, centralize the rooks, fair enough. And then um, now a typical motif for anyone who's ever studied e4, e5 positions is that the knight on c6 is somewhat misplaced because it blocks the c pawn. But here I think the big reason that it's misplaced is that the c3 pawn just dominates the d4 and b4 squares. And here after knight e7, this is exactly the kind of position where I just think white is really regretting this knight on e3 because uh, the weakness of the d4 pawn, thanks to the rook no longer defending it, means that he can't play d4. So for example, black is aiming to bring the knight to g6. Um, and uh, I think this knight on e3 would really just rather be on g3. And in a position like this one, the e4 pawn would be well defended and white would be ready to play uh, d4 with some pressure on black's position. But since the knight is on e3, uh, this is um, 
This is a mis this is misplaced. And indeed, you see Dakota says threatens to play knight f1. Now, after h3, it says the plan might be to go knight f1, knight g3 next. That's uh, perhaps it could have explained it a little better. And it would, if you click dig deeper, I'm sure it will. But um, after h3, uh, there came instead um, knight e7, uh, queen d7, and then white played knight h2. So I guess this was Jan's whole point was to bring the knight back to h2 and then play knight g4. And, uh, you know, Magnus played rook d8. It is good because it threatens to play d5. So there came knight g4. Um, and uh, this is actually a pretty important position because if white is able to take on f6 next and then drag the rook to f6, like let's say black does something stupid like king h8, now that the knight on f6 has been exchanged and the rook has been dragged off of the e6 square, now finally white is ready for d4. And then he's starting to contest the center a bit and black is definitely a bit worse here. But of course, Magnus wasn't going to allow this. So instead, he played knight takes g4, which prevents this idea of knight takes f6 check. So uh, we can take on g4, hg, and now I very much like throwing d5 directly. As I said, oftentimes, whoever gets the d5 or d4 break first in these positions tends to be better. I don't think black's better yet, but largely because white just throws d4 right back at him. And honestly, here, this is a run when I woke up, and I thought the game was going to fizzle to a draw very quickly, but that's not what happened. There came e takes d4, e takes d5, and now black has to be careful. Uh, he really needs to not let white go rook takes d4 here. So like if you were to play knight takes d5, rook takes d4. We have this horrible pin on the d-file and black would lose material. But rook e4, as played in the game, does a much better job of that. Um, if you go back to rook e4, it's good because, uh, you know, it escapes the, it, it keeps the rook from being taken, but also stops white from using the up in d-file. So following rook e4, white tried queen c2. And then, uh, of course, we need to uh, make sure that queen takes, the rook can't get taken, so we need to move the rook again. So there's not really anywhere else sensible for the rook to go because we need to keep the d4 pawn defended. Yeah, and this was the moment where uh, Nepomniachi really just messed up tremendously. He played g3, and so here decode says rook takes d4 would be better. That's uh, a very charitable thing to say. I think g3 is just an egregious blunder. I mean... Rook takes d4 basically just forces a draw. So, for example, if you follow this line that decode gives, take everything. Take this, take this, rook e7, and, you know, this is just a draw. For example, after queen d1 check, the machine is suggesting that we're going uh, queen c8 check and queen back, rook back to d8. And we're just repeating moves at this point, and the position is symmetrical pawn structure. It's, it's just a draw. So that's sort of how I was expecting the game to end. But instead here, Nepomniachi played g3 which is a huge blunder. And then here you see d takes e3 is absolutely forced because if this rook were to leave the fourth rank with like rook f6, uh, white just ends up a clean pawn up. But the calculation is not too hard. Decode explains the key ideas behind d takes e3 really nicely though. It says d takes e3, the best continuation is minus five. So this is just a huge advantage, like black's completely winning. And then um, threatens to play e takes f2 check or queen takes g4, so see all this stuff, deflects the white pawn away from rook 2, and uh, and we're just crashing through. But the most critical thing is what happens if uh, white takes the rook, because now black is a piece up, white needs to take the rook, but after queen takes g4, check this, this attack is crashing straight through. So there came king f1, queen h3 check, and then king g1, and then uh, here uh, e takes f2 check would have been a better move, uh, which... Um, I like this note a lot. Deflects the white queen away from c2 and denies it control over uh, g6. So e takes f2 check supports rook g6. So after e takes f2 check takes and rook d6, we're now ready for rook g6 mate next move. And there's just not a thing white can do about it. It's actually very surprising to me that Magnus didn't find this. What he played was good enough to win the game, so you can't criticize him too much. But this was just a one mover, and it's just said and done, and the game is over. Um... So here, uh, I think that e takes f2 check would have been a better move. If you compare this to playing rook d6 directly, this is now white can counterattack the queen with rook takes e3, and the point is that after rook g6 check, we can sacrifice our queen, and then black's queen is also hanging, so that's bad news. But by uh, starting with e takes f2 check, like decode had said here, um, after e f2, queen f2, rook d6, if we tried something like rook e3 here, the queen cannot take the g6 rook because she has been distracted from the uh, 
from the c2 square. So after king f1, I mean, knight f5 as Magnus played was certainly good enough, um, but as soon as you start seeing an evaluation of this level, it doesn't really matter what move you make, it's just the, the game is sort of over. So after knight h4, threatens mate, and after f takes e3, queen g3 check, it's just very direct, king f1, knight f3. And, uh, and here just gives the best continuation is just what happened in the game, queen f2, queen h3 check, and then, um, yeah, this is an important move, and it provokes white's queen to g2, because if you were to take f2 directly, then after knight takes e1, white could turn the tables with d takes e7, and white would be winning. But following queen h3 check, queen g2, and now queen takes g2 check, and king takes g2, knight takes e1, we note that this move comes with check, which means that white is not in time to play uh, d takes e7, he must take this knight, and after rook takes d6, uh, black has a clean pawn up in this rook endgame. And not only does he have a pawn up, he also has control over the only open file. So this game is effectively over. Um, the rest felt totally unnecessary to me, but you can't blame Napomniachi for continuing the game. So here, you know, when it says black played g6, king f8 would be better. King f8 is minus 4.25, and g6, apparently it says... The best continuation, minus 4.51. Already the computer has changed its mind. And when you're at minus 4, it just doesn't matter. It's 6 and one half dozen the other. Uh, so um, after b4, a takes b4 was an important move. Uh, so it prevents white from playing b takes a5. And if white could go b a5 and rook b5, he'd have some hope to save the game. But after a takes b4, there's just nothing. Takes, and now... I very much like uh, the move rook to a2 uh, because it prevents a5. So, for example, after rook a2, uh, rook c4, for example, c5. If this rook were not on a2, white could play a5 and start trading pawns and breaking up the pawn mass, and you'd have very good drawing chances. Um, but instead, after a takes b4, rook takes b4, rook a2, there's no more hope for this. So white tried to this plan of bring the king straight to c6, take the two queenside pawns, and then go promote the a-pawn, but this is just way too slow, because if you think about white having to play king e4, 1, move king d5, 2, moves king c6, 3, moves king takes c7, 4, moves king takes b6, 5, moves, it takes 5 moves for him just to make a passed pawn, and then the a-pawn still has to go through when the rook is behind it. So that'll be like 6 moves to play a5, 7 to play a6, 8 to play a7, 9 to play king b7, and 10 to play a8. It's like 10 moves away, and in the meantime, black has this passed h-pawn, which will queen in like 5 moves. So it's, um, it's much faster. The h pawn for black is just much faster in h5 came. And there really wasn't much else to say about this game. Like, Magnus just cleaned up without any particular trouble. So, like, white went for these pawns, but now, um, after h2 here, everything wins. Like, I was expecting black to just go f6 and just say, all right, I'm going to win this race. This g pawn is coming straight to g2. And that certainly was good enough to finish the game. But, uh, Magnus, um, Instead, played rook takes c3 check, and then after king takes b6, played rook b3 check to uh, to get a new queen. And I was a little bit critical of this decision when I was annotating the game, because the a-pawn looked a little bit scary, and uh, I didn't see how black could make a pass pawn of his own too quickly, but Magnus still made it look easy. Um, we're threatening rook queen e6 check, so black played, white played uh, king e7, but after check, if you play rook b7, the e3 pawn will drop. And following king a8. I really like this move, king g7. I think the point is black wants to play queen d8 check and win the a5 pawn, but this would be a tremendous blunder here on account of rook b8 when the queen is pinned. So black, by playing king g7, now is threatening to play uh, queen d8 check to win the a5 pawn. If white were to play a6, we go queen e6, which forks the rook in the a6 pawn. The only way would be rook a3, and then after check and check, the rook gets captured and black wins. So, um, instead of a6, Napomniachi tried rook b6, but he resigned after queen c5, uh, so, because there's no way for him to save his a-pawn. So, for example, if, um, if he, the a-pawn is attacked and can't move because the rook is hanging, and if rook a6, we can go, sorry, we can go queen b5, and now the rook is attacked, and let's say white goes rook a7, the problem is he will just never make another move for the rest of the game. Like, this king cannot come out to these squares because it's under control. The rook can't go to a6, and if it ever leaves a7 otherwise, he'll lose the pawn. And so he just runs out of pawn moves in the center. Like, something like this comes, and say black just goes king d5, and 
If you ever play a6, I can just ignore it, king back to e6, and go make a move. It's a deadly zit swing. Um, and if white takes f7, there's always just queen e8 check, picking up the rook. So uh, Nepomniachi understandably resigned. Uh, so it was sort of an abrupt end to the match when I thought there was going to be one more game before Nepomniachi blundered with, uh, with g3. But hopefully this video shed some light into uh, how the games went, what went down, and how Magnus managed to win. And I think Deco did a good job of explaining a few critical moments as well. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, we'll see you for the next World Championship match sometime.